crown is blue. Do you understand that? And this is an umbilical cord. And this ball right here is the earth. And these are the degrees of the earth rotating around the sun. And we are the sons of God. Wow. And you are the will. Because you have no husband, no one knows where you came from. That's why you're called Allah. Arm, leg, leg, arm, head, forward and back. Allah, man, or one. Thank you, Mother. Now, let me answer that question again, good brother. Because I want everybody to hear it. No, the, the question was, in time in history, um, have the more... I know about Mexico, I just want them to hear it. Or have the more been associated with uh, the Masons or the Shriners? All right, now, I want you to say, I want you to understand this. Mason really is Masen, meaning mother's son. And I am the son of mother. If you want to know what a, ma a Mason's mark is or a Mason's symbol is, in reality, we talk about Compton Square, everything, no. Mm -hmm. Wow. Minor glitch in the matrix. Huh? Ah, the matrix? What's up? Just the DVD. We were training the tape or something. Well, I'll leave it on that She got my phone. Yeah. Movement of man on this planet and in this solar system. Time never was when man was not. But we don't know where our mother came from. So she is God and none other. Allah is a feminine name. And father comes from pata, or maternity, the process of creation. But we fell. But we fell spiritually. This is why the ancient Moabite nation evolved into the Moorish nation. Same people, same blood. Moabite nation, matriarchal rule, i.e. mother rule. The Amazon or the Amazing Queens. Do you understand? And she transferred that authority to her sons, which is what this crown of light stands for. And it is Corona Soul. That's what that is. And on this crown, it has four sets of three circles. Dealing with perforations 9, 12, and 18. And the 9 is the 9 cosmic month in the womb of woman. Within the course of our cycles in this particular solar system of 12, that we call the 12 moons, the movements of the moon, that we call the 12 months of the year. And the 18 is the dual triangle that we call Shield of Solomon or Star of Dalu, or they say the Star of David, which is that which is above, so shall it be below. Why it is the spiritual why? and the physical, strangely mixed. Why is the 18 represented? And that? you have that dual pyramid, that trinity twice. So the 18 represents the two So it deals with the abstract and the physical. These are principles so in theology angle? and philosophy. These is where you get your, what is known as hermetic laws in masonry. Her. Yes, it is nine, her medic. No, I know that, but he's saying that that's her ritage. The two nines with the triangle. Inheritance. Why is those why does 18 represent the two triangles? Mother Earth. Divine laws of nature. Mother Nature. Understand these things. The study of these principles in this universe is masonry. And it's really not a modern club. The modern club is designed because the Moors taught the Albion sons or the Inglot men law, order, and governmental principles. That's when we gave them lodges in the North Country or the long houses from the Equa Confederation to teach them government. That's a karmic debt, which is another lesson, which is why they're ruling. Do you understand? And so they must wear this crown too to qualify them.
themselves. However, that tassel must be pinned because they are bound and they cannot float. You understand? But we are the founders of civilization. Noble Dwali came back in spirit to redeem us from our fallen state, which means we were not always in this state and condition. So those things must be taught to bring us to that state of mind where that memory always is, because brains are also in your cells, not just here. And they can be regurgitated, they can be agitated, and memory will come back, but it took a master to bring it back. Mm. I'll be clear. Um. Masonry, for those who are in the club, is limited to 32 degrees in the Western Hemisphere. Now, 32 degrees, you, you take an ice cube, right? You take water and elements. Yes, and 32 degrees of freezes, am I correct? Right. One degree, 33, begins to melt and flow, am I correct? So, they're static, isn't it? But Moorish Americans have the qualification to be 360 degrees without being bound to the bond. Are you understanding? So the relationships of Moors and Masonry is that Masonry is the order of clubism that is what you would say. They are the keepers, the shrine, the keepers of the North Gate. North Gate is North America. Where is the Moroccan Empire? Northwest of Mexico. Where is Northwest of Mexico? North America. What is North America and Northwest of Mexico called in masonry? The North Gate. What is the North Gate called in more science? What area of the planet? Is there anyone here? The Tropic of Cancer, above the celestial equator. And when the Son of God comes out of the Southern Hemisphere, crosses that celestial equator, and hits that northern hemisphere according to the calendar of the Moors. The star is now in the east. Now you understand the eastern star in masonry for the sisters. And then you see that crescent in the, in, in, in the east, and you see Venus getting brighter as she gets closer. Pay attention to the sky. And then we say, wow, the sun has now passed over. Now you understand where the celebration of Passover comes from? And Easter? And Esther in the Bible, and why they teach you about Ruth the Moabitess in Masonry as one of the first lessons? Because you're Moabite. And if you go to those sublime schools and come out still being black, you're cleansed. Are you satisfied? One more? Any more questions? It's not a week. It's on. Um, um, I was inquiring about the um, Mexicans. Uh, are Mexicans considered wars? We hit like this. <laughs> One of the things that I was planning on doing, but, but they, they had a plan for me, I was just came out of POW. And I'm going to give honor and thanks to the Moors that came to the college because I don't want to make no contract with them. And I was going to deal with that, but I was being disallowed of uh, access to the law library because I was talking to Mexicans when I was POW. All right? And one of the things I'm going to write uh, in uh, probably in uh, the Outer Rock Light for, in, in, uh, for Hollywood and California and for this area uh, is dealing with that matter. It's interesting that you should bring that up because that was one of the things on my mind. Now let's make some points here. A relative to the United States, you know, so let's look at these things. Oh, there are around four or five in the United States in the Western Hemisphere. The United States is a, is a prepositional phrase, political prepositional phrase. Oh, uh, the United States, Estados Unidos de la Escada, or that's the United States of America, Mexico. That is the United States of America. And in fact, what Grand Chief Nature was saying, we must be very clear on what the United States is, what the U.S. is. And I also want to mention USA on nationality card, Unity, Salvation, Allah. Islam. That's what it means. Now, 
Let me listen. I'm going to need you. Mexicans are Americans. What happened when the European began to steal our birthright by claiming to be something he was not? And we bought it. We get confused about that, don't we? So we know that the Moors ruled the seven seas and seven continents for 1196 years. But the sign of astrology, 12 signs of, of, of the zodiac, 0 to 9, 26 letters of the alphabet, and geometry, which is what you see that G in that chromosome kind of square, that's geometry. It also means God, mathematics. Now, of those seven continents, two of the major continents are Americas, aren't they? And that's a plural. Two of the major continents, right? Now, just like they told people Santa Claus was real, they told people that America was a country. But those who know, those who study and pay attention to things, know that America are two continents and isthmus and a multiplicity of islands, i.e. Americana. Correct? Even your child knows that until we mess them up. Am I correct? Now, to, just to make it simple for a child to understand, so we're going to deal with elementary school geometry. I mean, geography. Oh, can you come over here so I so can? Now, if you notice, look at North America, Central America, South America, correct? Huh? Now, are continents a country or are countries within country uh, 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 jurisdictions within continents? Now, on the North continent, you have Canada, uh, correct? And you have a, 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 a jurisdiction called the United States absence of a natural, national name. Then you have a jurisdiction below that called the United States of Mexico, which has a national name. Now, Canada, the people of that jurisdiction will be known as Canadians. A child would understand that, wouldn't they? The people of the jurisdiction of Mexico will be called Mexicans of America. Am I correct? Indigenous too, right? Uh-huh. So that's a North continent too, correct? Now, in the middle of that, there's a jurisdiction that says the United States, but it's absolutely national name. Nobody paid attention to that because no one pointed it out until no, until no Drali came. So, there, so if there's Canadians and there's Mexicans, who's in the middle? United Statesians? <laughs> now, let's look at this. But if someone didn't bring to your attention, we will contaminate our children with what we've been doing and then accuse others of miseducating them. So, Mexico is a part of the American continent, am I correct? So there are Americans, aren't they? Aren't they? And the only foreigner here is the Europeans who've been occupying our land. We got confused giving them credit for being the sovereign and calling our own brothers and sisters foreigners. But the true superior sovereign here, Moorish Americans in their proper self, can declare for the record that they have a right to deal with our territories as we have in theirs, because we're all one family. And we're not confused. When the Moors start acting like they know, these things will not continue to go on. We must speak up and take our places among the affairs of men and declare for the record our welcoming map to our brothers and our sisters from the Southlands of America. That's a maximum. Where is the land of the Moors? Where did the Moors dwell? Go to your questionnaire. Northwest, Southwest of Mexico. Now, sis, queen, grandchildren, who are the Mexicans? Are they Moors? Mm -hmm. We're not confused all. So we are going to have to change our language and how we deal with these matters, aren't we? And back to the great sheep, to the brother. The frame of mind that we have is how we execute our government, how we respond. We will be back in power when we're back in power in the throne of day. When that pineal gland starts vibrating between your eyes here, and that spiritual sense becomes automatic, just like you're breathing. That's when the government comes back. Until then, we're clipped. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. We are part of this is a government. 
We are teaching our people their nationality and their forefathers ancient and divine creed. And being part and parcel of this said government, we must live the life accordingly. But we have not been doing that, have we? How many more over the years have you seen publicly demanding amongst themselves and amongst the people and amongst the government, even some going to jail? for demanding the enforcement of this Constitution in order to save this nation. No Charlie said in the divine warning from the prophet to the nations to enforce this Constitution. He told all these Moors what this mission was and is, and how many Moors picked up that Constitution and started studying and started demanding its enforcement. It wasn't even a part of the culture. Which is why when we speak of some of these dead terms in law, some of the rules aren't familiar because they had not been taught. Now, no drama said every temple must have a school. Am I correct? But then we all acknowledge the sellout, don't we? But we all acknowledge the effect of that sellout. So therefore, we disqualify ourselves as government. This is why he said the time will come that people will come to this movement with their eyes open. But there will be those who will all. And the truth will come from the mouth of babes. That means the unborn. At that time. But they are here now. Um, <laughs> we don't be clear. I'm just satisfying some things. And I want also to fulfill some other parts of your question. So please don't hesitate to bring them up. Because I wanted to address some of those things too. And so as we come together. Now Lord Jolly says, help me. In my mission to bring my people back into the constitutional fold of government. So, how can the body of people that have been made national operate or take their places among the affairs of men when we have not studied the laws that govern men? i.e. national and international law. What is that? Constitution. It's not complicated, it's just that it's, we've been diverted. And sometimes we need to get smacked a little bit to bring us back to life. But he said, also, as Rishi Nitra said earlier, the hand has not been told. If I told you everything, you'd go back to sleep. Which means your involvement in this movement and in working to help uplift all humanity and participate in all lifting acts of the War Science Temple of America, the experience will bring you to those things that you needed to know. And then if you look into the things that Noah Drawley said, and as he traveled from different countries in the Western Hemisphere, and recognized what he represented to you, that you would follow the pattern and do the same thing. And when you went to Panama, or Cuba, or the other nations amongst your family, you would be recognized as a national, and then you would uh, immediately discover that you were out of war because you wouldn't know how to communicate with them in the protocols. Because you were not dealing with, what, the Organization of American States. Because you thought they were only here. So it's concept of mind again, isn't it? So I want to bring that up. So our regaining our status, or what you call the full sovereignty, or the activities that we need in government is when we fulfill the Constitution of the War Science Temple of America, which is a preparation for you. For when you go out to the world, that you are your skilled in those principles by exercising them with each other. With each other. But we haven't really paid attention to what he was saying to us. And I'm not knocking it, I'm just saying we need to look at the lessons again. Mm -hmm. Because all of them are there. That's right. It's just that I think to some degree, we did not take the prophet as serious as we thought we did. Not that we were insincere, but that we were happy and pleased with what he brought us, but did not take the broad and encompassing meaning of it. This is world government. And you've got a body of people that are in control of your birthright. They're not giving this thing up easy. They're not going to sit down. You're going to have to stand up for them to sit down. And until you stand up and be counted, they are going to sit in your throne of power. Are we clear? You know, and so I'm saying that, so it's sort of like when the prophet came, he gave us what we needed to redeem ourselves. 
And this is what, like, even when the prophet made mention of certain problems that were happening, we need to go back and, and, and review a lot of things that he said. And one of the things that he said to the Moors, this is your Moorish movement. He transferred responsibility to us. And we relinquished it and keep waiting for him to do things. He gave us things and we take them and polish them like they're jewelry. And say, well, look what we did with it. And the problem gave me this. It's not shiny. <laughs> but we have not built with it. So like talents that we have not used to profit to make better things with. He gave us elements to build with. Mental elements. Skilled elements of knowledge of government. And we just repeat them like parrots, but we have not exercised them. So when we, when we talk with each other, it's all fine. But when we go out to the world, we don't talk to other people. What does it mean? We're not taking our places on those affairs on them. So we have negated our responsibility. We shouldn't be upset. The prophet didn't abandon us. He gave us what we need. We abandoned ourselves because we abandoned our responsibility. And that is to what? To enforce the Constitution. And if you read that Constitution, you'll recognize that it has an international venue. Dealing with people of the same state, people of different states, etc., people of diversity of all the nations on the planet. But we didn't take that serious because we just thought the Constitution was just a divine Constitution and by the laws of the Lord Science Temple. Mm -hmm. So he, he declared in the divine ruling for the nations, and that's plural. He didn't say that, that was singular. He said, enforce the Constitution. He said, if these things are not carried out, the verse is yet to come. Now, here we are sitting here right now and still discussing problem. When actually we should have long ago been carrying this out, and this flag should have been flying a long time ago on a broader scale, other than just being on the parkway in Philadelphia and at the United Nations. And I want to make another thing point clear. Masonry, masonry, the two important the two most important symbols of masonry is this says in this pyramid you see on the back of this dollar bill the national treasure now you notice that on the back of this fiat that they call the dollar bill you can pick it out of your pocket it'd be good if you do those who don't know government so I want you to follow me on this I'm giving you a Masonic lesson it's a Moorish science lesson. You notice that pyramid, underneath that pyramid, you know that pyramid is not Rome. Are you, are, 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 do, we, are, do we have any debate about that? That pyramid is not Rome. Under that pyramid, it says the Great Seal, doesn't it? On the charter of the Moorish Science Temple of America, you see that pyramid. That's the insignia of the Moorish nation. And the emblem of the Moorish nation, Rashid, that dual triangle that he has on his neck, that's the emblem of the Moorish nation. That dual triangle. Wow. Now, so those who don't know were rejected, weren't they? But if you study, you know it was yours. And you reclaim it, wouldn't you? Now, you notice that no officials that you see operating in this particular government speak under that great seal pyramid, do they? But they speak under that flying bird, don't they? But let's look at what this says underneath that great seal. It says, the great seal. And then over here, it says, of the United States, doesn't it? So they let you know right in front of your face that that seal is dual. verse and reverse. The only government on the planet that has a dual national seal. One side is silent. I wonder why. Hmm. Why is it? And of its connection is it? So it's telling you this is the great seal of the United States. The obverse is the principal side. And the reverse is what? Supported. You also find that information in the Library of Congress, the largest library on the planet. And guess what's in the Library of Congress of these United States of America? It will tell you that that eye of that great seal is Allah. And it was insanely amazing. 
Now, how come none of those things are under that seal? Because it belongs to you. But you give this great seal to many wars, and they themselves reject it. Back to the question or the answer about why we're not sovereign yet. Because the government's already in place, but you won't enforce this constitution. You won't declare and fess up to what belongs to you. He took your birthright and you won't bring it back. No drug he brought it back to you. And you won't claim it. This is the sovereign seal of a Moorish nation. How come you don't know that? Not that you don't. I'm just making that as a, as a grand statement to these people who think that they live up black and color and some of the people as Moorish Americans who supposed to know these things and won't claim it. So if you don't claim the sovereign power, he's claiming it. So he's sitting in your seat. So your sovereignty is clear until you do what? Honor thy mothers and thy fathers that thy days may be long upon the earth when the Lord thy God lies given thee. You honor not your mothers and fathers and transact business and family needs and you will serve them moments. So why are we upset? Why don't we just get our house in order? Because with these lessons, you can get your house in order. But we won't use them. We just repeat them because it sounds good. Because we want to feel good with each other. We need to get our act together and really study for real. And when we study for real, everything that the prophet works will lead you to this information. It will. It's, it's, it's really it's unavoidable. Now let's take a little bit more lesson about that great seal. You see that great seal? We're talking Masonically now. And you see that great seal's got that eye on that pyramid? Now I want you to pay attention to also that star that's over that eagle's head. It's 13. But 13 is really woman, not just 13 colonies. 13 times a year, mother drops a seed. Every 28 days, 2 hours, 52 minutes. Are oh, you understand? And she produces the 12 disciples. It means both numbers and the families of nations. And 12 times 12 squared, Masonically, is 144,000. Are we clear? Mm -hmm. We are the children of what? Provided for and the breast of one mother. As what? I think we need to pay attention to the lessons. And if you look at that, those 13 stars, it's formed just like that emblem. These guys were on point, eh? Right there. <laughs> study, study, study. Hex Alpha, Blue Shrine, Star of Dawu, the Moorish Nation. So now they're governing and they got you crowned. So let's look at that period. Now, so the sun rises in the east and Moors turn to the east when they give honor to the universal powers. A lot, all universal law, don't we? Traditionally. And so the sun shines in the east. And the principles come from the east, even unto the west. And with the right one comes, comes from the east, even unto the west, seeking his lost sheep. And the problem came to bring this back to you, to bring you back to the constitutional form of government, and the sun shines from the east and casts a shadow on that pyramid, and there's a shadow in the west. But it violates the law of physics, and that shadow continues underneath that pyramid. And so the pyramid is sitting on a shadow. It's a violation of physicism. But most people don't pay attention to it, do they? So let's take the eye of Allah and bring it down to earth. And you cross it. Now you got to do a trying, don't you? And that shadow turns into a seven, don't it? That's, and it's in that circle, isn't it? Circle seven and seven seal, right in the face. But unless somebody points it out to you, you may not notice it. Now let's turn to the front. Let's turn to the front. You've got four corners, don't you? Don't you? Now, this represents what you call a dollar, don't you? Doesn't it? Or what? 360 degrees, am I correct? It is dealing with a circle, am I correct? And a silver dollar, 360 degrees and silver. And the alchemical metal for a silver is representative of the moon, isn't it? And the moon goes through cycles, doesn't it? And you have corners and moons that deal with the waning and the waxing moon, am I correct? And that crescent.
person is dealt with in the symbols and the signs of Islam. Am I correct? And the moon governs the moon, doesn't it? And it governs the tides, doesn't it? Thirteen times a year, doesn't it? Huh? So let's go through this. So you got four four moons, don't you? And so he breaks this into four parts, parts, or four square, and it's called quarters. And the corners are silver, aren't they? Of course, they took the feet. They made your feet out now because they only know the signs of this. Now, let's look at this. In each one of those four, you've got a one, don't you? That actually makes up the four, don't you? Mm -hmm. And you've got four elements fire, air, earth, and water. Now, notice in the east. So turn to the east and then look at that one that is in the east, in the northeast corner. All the others have a form of circle, don't they? But the one in the east is a shield of heraldry, isn't it? But if somebody would point it out to you, you would recognize that. So heraldry is a family line, isn't it? It's a pedigree, it's a bloodline, isn't it? Is your lost the state when you want to claim it? Because the science is there, and your seal is there. When do you honor your mothers and fathers? Back to how we enforce the law. We must enforce the Constitution because spiritually there's keys in there. And when you vibrate with them, the mind changes and the conditions change because the thoughts are real. So when you do what the prophet said, go out and redeem your people and change their frame of mind, it will redeem yourself. Because you're not getting anything if you don't help. The prophet in this movement, which means you are your brother's keeper. If you think you're going to get the benefit of this thing without going out there and helping get this job done, you got another tour coming. And if you don't do it, the worst is yet to come. And some of that worst we're experiencing already. And that's the answer to that question. Are there any other questions? I want to point out some other things. Now let's go back to really understanding this government. And this is for some of the students here who may hear some things who don't know this movement and some people who think they understand masonry and really don't. Right. Let's go to treating peace and friendship. Now, um, with all due respect, how many people here can count? Wait, what did you do that you that day? Got that all right. Now let's go back. As Grand Chief Lord Major Obey was saying earlier about the Treaty of Peace and Friendship and about George Washington being the ninth president, the reason why they teach the children in school that George Washington was the first president because they don't want the people to know that that was the period of the revolution with the transference of the government out of the Moorish into the Christian doctrine. Do you understand? All right. And the Franciscan Brotherhood. This is really told the story of Frank N. Stein. You, you need to understand that. Also the story of Dr. Moore Rose Island. All right. Now, you know that the uh, Constitution was adopted unofficially 1788 about June and officially 1789 at which time in April 30th 1789 George Washington was elected to the palace that is common knowledge as you're taught in schools am I correct so let's uh, be very simple with this and deal with maybe little children they're familiar with the name Thomas Jefferson right right and they're familiar with the name John Adams right and they're familiar with the name Benjamin Franklin, right? Well, let's talk about earlier history, right? During the administration of St. Clair, President Arthur St. Clair's administration, which is two administrations before George Washington. You don't hear about him because that is the administration when the treaty was ratified. So if you went back beyond 
of the great seal, meaning seal of the tomb. Well, no drawing on seal. So let me go back to some documents, and you can count, right? So let's go to this. Now, the Treaty of Peace and Friendship 1787 18 between Morocco and the United States. When reading, studying, and or analyzing the Treaty of Peace and Friendship between the Moors and the United States of 1787 18, one must be cognizant of the history and truth involving the relationship between the two political entities. A sound and prudent knowledge of the history of Europe and its adoption of governmental principles from the Moors is crucial to any serious historian. That's why you also must understand the true masonry. The, lo uh, the, the logical recognition of the ancient presence of the Asiatic Moabite Moorish presence in the Americas, coupled with world history, will definitely clear up most misrepresentations as have been affected by the destructive hands of the reconstructors of American history and the, tra the traditional condition of ignorance as caused by the colonial book burners and slave holders. Observe the timelines between the Treaty of Peace and Friendship 1787, the Ordinance of 1787, with its language and the 20 sections to Article 13, United States Constitution, the official adoption of the Constitution 1789, and the letter from George Washington to Sultan Muhammad of Morocco 1789, which we had read earlier, with a true listing of the other eight Master Masons presidents, circa 1781 to 1788 AD, uh, preceding George Washington, also a Master Mason, who was actually the ninth president. And furthermore, observe that the Treaty of Peace and Friendship 1787 was directed to be constructed by the Sultan of Morocco and sealed during the Arthur St. Clair administration. Arthur St. Clair was the president of the Continental Congress for the United States in the year 1787. And the ministers plenty potentiary who were entreated with plenary powers in representation for the United States of America were the following master masons. Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, John Adams with Thomas Barclay as agents in business. And take serious note also that the same men as ministers plenty potentiary in direct association with ambassadors and representatives for the Moroccan Empire's authority powers and supports by way of Sultan Sidi Mohammed were prefixed to become successive presidents for the United States Republic of North America. The treaty, no negotiations took place before any of these men were president. Benjamin Franklin, due to illness, chose to recuse himself from accepting his guaranteed presidential position with influence and Masonic instructions from Chief Justice Ben Bay, known in Reconstruction history as Benjamin Banner. Benjamin Franklin ceded to George Washington, who thusly became the ninth president of the United States instead of Benjamin Franklin. George Washington was unanimously appointed the ninth president of the United States of North America April 30, 1789, AD. And George Washington was an Army General under the preceding administration. Reconstruction historians list George Washington as the first president in order to veil crucial history, which exposes the colonists historical misrepresentations concerning the United States Republic and of the truth about the Moorish Empire's sovereign or superior sovereign connection to the land, the Aboriginal peoples, and to the eventual establishment of the United States Republic through amity and commerce. Thus, the truth would also be exposed about the nature of North American slavery and about the so-called black, negro, and colored slaves being of Moorish descent. John Adams served as vice president in the years 1788 and 1792. Adams was elected and became the 10th president of the United States of North America in the year 1796 AD. Reconstruction historians list John Adams as the second president. And Thomas Jefferson served as Secretary of State under the George Washington administration and served as Vice President during the John Adams administration in 1796. Jefferson was elected and became the 11th President of the United States of North America in the year 1800 AD. And Reconstruction historians list Thomas Jefferson as the third president. So you see the contradiction in the numbers? They don't want you to know about that treaty because they don't want to know that you're home. And they cannot deport you 
because you're learning. Now, I also want to read an excerpt from um, Executive Order 11490, which is the King Alfred plan, which is the military plan that the Inquisition is planned as the counter local drawing as the people became conscious. And remember, this is a military document, so it's basically top secret. Though redacted information was released, these are points of reference for you. And this is on page 374. Note, at the appropriate time to be designated by the president, the leaders of some of these organizations are to be detained, only when it is clear that they cannot prevent the emergency. And working with local police officials during the first uh, critical hours, all other leaders are to be detained at once. Compiled list of minority leaders have been ready at the National Data Computer Center. It is necessary to use the minority leaders designated by the president in much the same manner in which we use minority members who are agents, with central and federal. And we cannot, until there is no alternative reveal, King Alfred in all his aspects. The minority members of Congress will be unseated at once. And this move is not without precedent in American history. Attorney General, preliminary memo, Department of Defense. And this memo is being submitted in lieu of a full report from the Joint Chiefs of Staff. That report is now in preparation. And there will be many cities where the minority will be able to put into the street a superior number of people with a desperate and dangerous will. He will be a formidable enemy, for he is bound to the continent by heritage. I repeat. He is bound to the continent by heritage and knows that political asylum will not be available to him in other countries. The greatest concentration of minority is the deep south, eastern seaboard, the Great Lakes region, and the west coast. So these people are bound to this continent by heritage. They look for their heritage somewhere else, aren't they? Now you see why this military document is kept secret? This is a strategic document, but it's a, it inadvertently they admit that we're indigenous. That's why they keep building jails, because they can't do borders. Now, where is the Moroccan Empire? Where is the Northwest of Mexico? North America. Where is the home of the Moors? Northwest, Southwest of Mexico. Northwest, Africa, Southwest Africa, North America, Central America, South America. That resolves the problem of who's indigenous and who's not. Now you understand when the prophet said he's living on your virtues? That's a nice way of saying he's a leech. <laughs> and so if you don't fess up to that constitution and enforce the law, you're not trying to save your nation, are you? And so if you don't know the law, you can't enforce what you don't know. So the prophet says, study, study, study. <laughs> And when you would have studied well, you would ask me what to study next. I would reply, study, study what? Yourselves. yourselves. So if you study yourself, you'll find this out. Father Red Chief? Yes. Present. The son. Should a Norse American, uh, the one who has joined the Morris Science Temple, uh, join the military? No, they should not. And the reason why you should not is because you're in a war fighting against yourself. And most of you, and most of us old elders, already have experience of people in the family which we know have gone to war and other Asiatics have told them, ask them, what are you doing here? And a lot of Asiatics and a lot of us are here who are the offspring of mothers and fathers who came from wars that technically should have made it back. But made it back because some Asiatic did not take their life trying to school us that we were fighting a war against ourselves and we didn't catch on because we keep thinking that we somebody that we're not and we were busy trying to be Europeans. <laughs> Transacting business in European names, calling in his private jurisdiction our country when actually he worked under occupation and didn't know it. And therefore, he should not go and fight any wars for a foreign occupied government because they are not to be part They are an occupational force. Come back to the right? The okay. reason why I ask you that question is because uh, in the war side of of America, Temple of the where I united, that was encouraged. Uh, what, do you, what, do you, what do you say about that? I say it was done for lack of knowledge, not necessarily insincerity. Some people like, for instance, when people don't study, they don't want to take a position because people are trying to 
carry out of the private sector. But if they don't study with the private sector, they take certain assumptions. But a person who studies law will quickly recognize these things. A person who doesn't study just takes what they see on the surface. And, that, and most of the things that you see on the surface are an illusion. Yeah. Just, like, just like, for instance, like, uh, uh, like Ray Sheik was saying, you know, Constitution. Drew Ali was saying, enforce the Constitution, right? Article 4, Section 4 of the Constitution uh, uh, establishes a Republican form of government only. And yet our people, after reading, will turn around and keep on living in democracy. So that's a contradiction, isn't it? And so you waive your rights at that particular time. It's the same principle applies. The answers that you've given uh, have actually addressed a, a lot of things that we've been thinking. The question I want to put to you is this. We go on now and we talk to the lady that is the prophet and has direct answers to the other people as we can. But at the same time, there are uh, those like minds that understand uh, a lot of what we're talking about in terms of government. But among us, there are times that some of our brothers and sisters don't understand how to meet their people. And we are able to perpetuate and move forward to get closer to that time or to actually show a direction for those brothers and sisters who don't understand to that point. Yes. I bring that up to say, what do you recommend or suggest that we do? Because like minds find one another is yes. something that, that, that we always throw back and forth, and that's true. But perpetuating the understanding of those things that we're talking yes. about getting us closer to yes. enforcing the law, the divine constitution yes. on this government, I guess there's a point where you can't wait. You need to I'll, show, because yes, I'll, I'll, some of our brothers and sisters, when they see uh, these things in action, then they come along. Yes. Well, let, me, let, me, let me first go back to property. Now, first I would say, don't draw this in, in general. No, that's part of the problem. No. So therefore, the people, those who know now, let's look at this. When the prophet established the Lord's Science Temple of America, Old Canaanite Temple, which became the Lord's Holy Temple of Science, and then in 1925, uh, adopted as its corporate name, the Lord's Science Temple of America in 1928, right? Which means the Lord's Science Temple of America existed actually only 11 months and a few days. Come on, come on. People who really don't study keep thinking the Lord's Science Temple from the beginning, 1913. So, if they don't study, they don't see the trick. Right. The Moore Science Temple was only 11 months old when they finally got to the Ali because of traitors amongst us. But the movement is a civic organization and adopted a religious affidavit to make a space for everybody. It was a place for everyone. But those who do not study don't understand that this is that he brought government to. Mm. And so people, you know, have got caught in this thing of thinking that, you know, praying and everything will be all right. And it hasn't happened because that's not what the message was. He told us to take our places amongst the affairs of men and to enforce the Constitution. Now, I want to read this from that same period of time <coughs> of 1928 by Prophet Ali. This is an excerpt from the original Lord's Guide newspaper. Now I want, I want you to also pay attention to uh, a statement that I'm going to emphasize that the prophet said to show you where we've been violating and why certain things are not taking place. But we can resolve them. It's not like we can't fix them. All we got to do is stop faking and start enforcing what the prophet said. And stop saying that we're doing it when we're really not. Or, now listen to this. It is not unusual for a newspaper to make its debut in the city of Chicago. The past years have seen many such come and many such go. The Moorish guy taking its initial bow to the public knows not what the future awaits it, but throwing its efforts on the sides of right, reason, and tolerance, we hope that we might make the raid. The Moorish guy enters the field of journalism with malice toward none and charity to all. It is not our purpose or, uh, to disregard the work of other splendid journals, it is not our purpose to fail to give attention, due attention, and space to all American citizens, individuals, and organizations alike who are working in their chosen fields of endeavor for the private.
Congress and the government of all American citizens and all American institutions. We hope to cooperate with them in the intensive and ruling battle for universal justice. The Moorish God feels that the greatest weapon in the hands of our group today is our press. I'm going to repeat that. And this is the prophet's position. The Moorish guide feels that the greatest weapon in the hands of our group today is our press. How many times have you seen the Moors on the large repeat that and enforce that part? He just identified our greatest weapon. What happened to the Moorish guy this week? That, that answers a lot of questions, doesn't it? All right, now I continue. The truth will never be told about the disadvantaged minority by the general press of any country, whether that minority be racial, political, or religious. See, so we can't hide behind those things, can we? Because this is a prophet talk. Unless we express ourselves through papers, unless we express ourselves through papers of our own, he's saying of his own, he's, he's put this charge on the Moors. Of our own, the truth about us will not be told. Many of our accomplishments, many of the beautiful things, many of the horrible things and events which mark the progress of our group will go unrecorded. Were it not for papers of our own. He said, papers, it's plural. Our papers are our only hope. This is Prophet Little Our papers are our only hope of shoving ourselves out from under the avalanche of lies that are annually let loose upon us. A strong free press is the best possible safeguard of the liberties in general promotion and defense of the interests of a strong, free people. Probably, probably. That should be studied over and 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 over, 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 over again. Because we have violated that. And so therefore, things that our people, and he gave us the charge, those who took that nationality card, to go out and help lead the mission to redeem his people. And he said also for us, go out and redeem your people. We have not done that. But we, what we did was start little clubisms, deciding who did we want to follow who also claimed to be little trolley. Am I right or wrong? And even divided amongst ourselves who's supposed to be national, whose duty was to cheat those who didn't know. And now we're talking about how come we can't exercise our sovereignty. Uh, you know, but we feel self righteous because we've got churches and fences on. So let's go back to the point. For those who like mine, and that's why I probably said, well, if you want know, a bunch of us more to really carry this movement out and say it's on, or enforce it as well, then you can have one. That means if you got to do it by yourself, take it out to the people. That's right. That's right, brother. Take it to the people. The nation is out there. Right. If you have that consciousness, it is your duty, your responsibility, your charge as a Moorish American with a nationality card to produce literature to change the condition of these people. Because when you change their minds, the bodies will follow. But if we don't take this knowledge and take it to our people, they can never know. Because certainly those who are living on their virtues are not going to tell them because they did what? They claim Negro, Black, and color to steal their birthright. They don't understand birthright, therefore they cannot understand sovereignty. Even though the charter on their wall comes from a sovereign power. Do you see what I'm trying to say? So it's the duty of those who know to tell those who do not know and not to take advantage of them and leech off of them. Right. It's not for us to take on titles of nobility and put them on holy garb and act holier than thou because we may know two cents a little bit more. Because what we know belongs to them. And if we have not turned, we have become enemies to the cause. And so many of us are enemies to the cause, which is why we're sitting here even having this discussion. But this is good because it's coming out of the world. But this should be a standard. Every world sized temple should have emissaries that go into the communities to teach them the truth about nationality and birthright and governmental principles. And if they fail to do so, they are enemies to the cause. But the deal is, we suffer for it. 
So what happens is we got terms and fences that are still suffering legal problems that should have been resolved a long time ago. But we should not get frustrated. We should take down those and get to work. If your thoughts in the belly of the whale, scratch his line while you're there. By teaching somebody who does not know. Don't try to free yourself, free somebody else. And believe me, things will change. And have a greater respect for women really because we will vibrate in them and they will bring the sons here that we need to help resolve this problem. Because every man, every son of woman, every son of God is born and he does everything in his life to serve mother, his aunt, his woman, girlfriend, maybe whatever you want to call it. Everything we do, we do for them. Even though we play these games that that ain't true, you know it's true. Man who sit around with $59,000 in his pocket, balls in the red and red pool, we go to the ball and we'll see the children sweat. Since we come around, we're going to take a bad pool and sip curtains up. <laughs> Mom, now that ain't nothing true. We don't care. We go to the pools and pools. She come around, we want to, you know, bait fish and all that kind of stuff. In there. <laughs> Buy a nice box so they inspire us. But they need to understand what our world is. That we are their company. We're not actually superior. They, they are actually evil. They're God. They give the law we evil. The sons are really based. And we execute the law. But we must not confuse the fact that we're giving governorship that we man. Because we really need a man. Because our breasts don't feed nothing. So I'm well, you got two little buttons there. Excuse me. Yes, sir. Hey, I have a question. Ready? Does anybody else have a question? For 6.30. Put your hands up. Um, Grace, she, in light of all that you just said, uh, where does the convention uh, come into play with uh, respect to the nation uh, in the state that it's in? What role does the convention play in being recovered? Uh, yes, always. Now, this is what occurs. Convention comes when consciousness comes. Meaning that all our muscles are born and not me. Seats are born and not me. You understand? Know we got confused with assigned roles. And that, but that's not spiritual. Those who are willing to do this job, mothers will give the birth to those who will do the job. Mother never fails to do so. You need to recognize it when you see the literature. You pay attention to the prophet, you will really understand what he says. You also understand that certain things are done which call called preliminary form because work must be done. Knowing that necessarily certain things will not be carried out. But in due time, mothers will give birth to those who are capable and able. And when Allah tells you and makes you notice that there's dirt on the floor, piece of paper, you don't start signing it, you pick it up. So when Allah makes you aware that it's time for a convention, then you call that convention. And a convention is government. And so you must do those things to make people conscious of that. Now as people become from that little seed, you know, because from that seed, the thought of Allah, is there. And so when the Lord Raleigh came and planted the thought amongst us, we all became seeds. But different people opened up at different times. And consciousness is representative of that opening up. And then when you unfold, your God unfolds. And when you